that, that that tells me yes. So let's do it. Here comes everyone. Uh, play retro begins in three, two, one. Hey, my kids lost their lunch on that roller coaster you built. Oh, I thought they'd like the seventeen loop de loops. Introducing Roller Coaster Tycoon. Build the amusement park of your dreams with rides and coasters that'll blow your mind. There's plenty to eat in your park, but where are your bathrooms? Gee, I knew I forgot something. Place bathrooms and concession stands to keep your customers happy. I doubled the bathrooms, built some incredible new roller coaster rides, and lowered ticket prices. Yeah! Tourists. Get on Roller Coaster Tycoon now for PC CD ROM. Oh, oh PC CD ROM oh. fancy. Oh, small platter disc. Uh huh. I'm excited. Hey, everybody, welcome to Play Retro. This is Play Retro, and I'm one of your hosts, Scott Johnson, and I sure hope I don't barf on your poorly designed mm. roller coaster. I ate a lot of cotton candy, so things are looking a little dicey. Ooh, you must have played the same game I did, because I'm your other host, Brian Dunnerway, and woo! We! Ah! Do it again! Do it again! Click, <laughs> click, click, click! Woo! I think I'm going to be sick! Again! <laughs> That's what I did all week. We And, uh, and you know, what did after where I quit, and then I went outside. Oh, good. To, to, to get my feet back underneath me, this... That's, to, the, that's how this action happens in this game. That's how this people game. tell you to do. They tell you to go touch grass. That's the hot thing to say now is touch grass. Yeah, t- touch grass. You got to go get one with the earth. Yeah, go become one with it. Uh, but become one with us as we talk about Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2 today. Uh, we'll start in 99 and we will work our way up. Yeah, and then we'll uh, talk there. about yeah, if you if you stay tuned, we'll talk about um uh how the many ways you can play it and the right way to play it and the also oh wrong way to play it like mm-hmm. I did this week. Apparently there mm-hmm. is f- is a, absolutely a wrong way to play. Also no, let, there's different ways. Let this wash over you a little bit here. Just the feeling of being in a carnival atmosphere, you know. Yeah. People on rides and buying like corn dog shit and that sort of thing. Corn dog shit. You're walking around. There's funnel cake waffing yep. in the air. Yep. You're waiting for the screams. You know they're coming. Yeah, the you know they're you know they're going to be wee. here. But before we get into any of that today, it's so funny when you do we or woo. It yeah. does that. Uh, Discord does that. Cut off the high oh, parts does it thing. Cut me off. Yeah, because it thinks you're hitting a pitch nobody wants to hear during a raid or whatever. Well, they <laughs> so don't want to hear it, off. but you know what? Leroy yeah. See, it only right. lost a little of that. You're fine. You're good. Okay. Uh, anyway, let's talk about this real quick. So um, <laughs> you know how, I don't think we talked about it maybe briefly here, but I talked about it a bunch on the Daily Tech News Show a week ago, that uh, iOS was opening up the doors to game emulation on uh, Apple devices again and on the store. And the reason they were doing this was a couple of, a couple of complicated things were going on, but one of them, or the main one, was the European Union passed some additional legislation that required them to be more open about how certain things can get on the store. And so a lot of these developers uh, who've been working on apps and stuff, and mostly on sideload sty- type stuff where you got to you know hack your phone to get it to work right, uh, got on it quick. And I used one that everybody said was the bomb called Delta Emulator for the iOS. Ooh, Put it on my yeah. phone. Um, here is the cool thing about this thing. Not only does it feature a ton of overlay controller stuff for the screen. I mean, your mileage may vary on how much you can stand using a touchscreen for stuff like this. I understand yeah. it's not optimal. I prefer my Ember Nick. That's not really my point. My point is these devices are obviously very capable, right? They could, they could push a lot of oh, yeah. older stuff. Uh, so they have, you know, some of them look like N64 controller set and some of them look like NES buttons and it's there's a bunch of variety there. But what they've done is made this extremely easy, especially if you're an iCloud user. Basically, I can take my ROMs, my legally stripped ROMs, right, and I can put, <laughs> let's just say I got 10 NES ROMs, all right? Right. I can put right. those in a folder right here on my Mac. Boop, they're just in. And it will... Then I can go to that app, and the app says, you know, add some ROMs. I hit plus. I go to that same shared folder. They're all there. I pull them in. They're playing. We're done. It's that, that simple. That is so awesome. Yeah. I didn't know that that's how it worked with the iCloud because I was curious because downloading the emulators, I've done it before, and, you know, and I've sideloaded stuff on my iPhone before. I haven't done that in a long time. But, yeah, so that's how you do it. You do it through the iCloud. I mean, that's super easy. It's super simple and was just no problem to do, and I kind of expected to have to go through some hoops because – um, people could use this for illegal ROMs. I totally get it. 
and I figured Apple didn't, doesn't want that kind of heat from Nintendo and others. Makes sense. But it uh, it really does work. It's like um, it's a little like comic book readers on an iPad. You've been able to do this forever. If yeah. you have ripped versions of your comics in PDF format or CBK or whatever the hell that other uh, comic book format is, you can just pull them into these apps. I have something called Panels that does that. Mm. And it's also true that if you go to, I don't know, Pirate Bay or something and download a stack of comics that aren't yours to own... You can do this right. exact same thing. And they've been getting away for that for, I don't know, 10 years or something. So yeah, no reason you can't do this with ROM. So anyway, I really like that one. I think there is an Android equivalent for Delta, uh, but there, I didn't look. There is. Okay, good. Yeah, and um, you can actually download the APK, and I think you can actually download it from the actual store, too, to be honest with you. I don't know that for a fact, but I did do a little peeking around. And mm-hmm. uh, this is mostly an emulator for Nintendo stuff, like the Game Boy Advance, the NES 64, right. the SNES, and, uh, and and that type of stuff, right? That's all I've used so far. I don't know. I assume yeah. I assumed, uh, maybe I assumed wrong, Thank but I assumed more. I could do some Genesis stuff, but I don't know if I can or not. Oh, Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I, did, I didn't know of anything except for that. So that sounds good. Yeah. So yeah, I, I need to dig deeper. I'll probably have a little more to say about this next week, but I was pretty excited when you uh, sent me. And the, it's the free, message. by the way, this Delta thing. It's free. Uh, let's see, I'll pull it up real quick here. Wait, does that mean I'm the product? It means you you are the product, dude. Oh, it also does it straight from uh, iTunes. Slash I don't Apple like Music. that it's free, but it makes sense, I suppose. What do I got to do? How do I have to give these people some money so they don't steal my information instead? You can ask the app not to track me, right? What <laughs> yeah, else can you do? You can do that. This app doesn't track you, though. This is like some super free thing. There's no ads. It's just somebody made an emulator, and it freaking works. And it uses cores. Brian, it has controller Brian options. Shows. Like, uh, let's us. see. Let's see. Game. Oh, you can. Oh, I didn't know this, dude. This just made it more interesting. Right, right. I can... Um, I can use any Bluetooth or MiFi enabled controller. Ooh. Oh, now see that really interests me because I do like my iPhone and it makes sense if the screen is if the screen where it's displaying the graphics is in a small square box that should leave plenty enough of real estate left on my phone for buttons and that type of thing, which would be similar to you know a Game Boy or something mm-hmm. uh, in that format. But yeah, I don't like overlay screens, so I, I would definitely need a, a secondary controller for me to be happy it's got all the cores you need um you're right it looks like it's nintendo stuff only so it does nes through ds so okay. nes Ooh, super DS, nintendo you got you got it to two two screens then yep. that would work well that's pretty cool that's free. Yeah. and it does let's see oh there's a sync service that's just called delta sync that lets you sync your saves between devices so oh that's cool. maybe that's where their money's gonna be at surely they're not just offering syncing that you for just, free but you just turn it on uh, All right, I'm downloading it right now. It's called the Delta app, and we get nothing for this, by the way. We're just... Oh, it uses... Okay, it's not there. Okay, you can enable right. syncing, but it will use either Google Drive or, or uh, Dropbox. Okay, well, that's fine. Yeah, Which that's everybody just, already has something like that anyway. So you're actually just using existing services. This thing just is a free freaking deal. Yeah, I don't... I'm, I'm a... I know you're I'm skeptical, a, you I can know. tell, but... I'm telling you, you know me, you know me. Yeah. I'm like, why is it free? What are you getting out of it? Sometimes people what just you- make cool shit because they want. And the, and you know what? Retro people and preservation people, they're a lot more this likely to not try to screw you. That's the right. I, thing. yeah, I, I trust preservation people who post stuff uh, um, lots of times, but then like, yeah, but I want also, I want them to make some money because these are developers and is, do they have like a, a Patreon page or something here. I'm trying they to might. Name, if they know. don't, they have uh, oh, here we go. Shane, Shane Gill is operations. Uh, Riley test it, test it. Yeah. Really as the developer. I love that. Caroline Moore is a graphic designer. Okay. Yeah. And you can send, uh, you can send them, you know, a tip or whatever, however you want to do it. You know, yeah. There's ways to PayPal people and that sort of thing. My privacy policy here. Yeah. What do they say right. about that? Are they, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm reading all store.io. What is that? Side loading for everyone. Okay, that's something else. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Yeah. I'll dig deeper. Cool though, right? Tom Merritt makes me paranoid. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> why? I why? always I don't know why I always attribute the, the my my uh desire to know where the profit is coming from, but I don't know if if Tom uh said something at some point in time that but every time I think it, I'm like, what would Tom do? And I'm like <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's he, he is somebody who will not jump to any uh, conclusion. He will he'll dig deep yeah. and find out for himself. He's got to know everything. So yes. there's nothing wrong with that. That's a good thing to do. Yeah, I, he's, I he's say do guy. it. I say do that. Respect. Okay. Respect. My wife just called and doesn't know I have shows at this time of day. So I'm going to send her Aww. a note and say, "Hi, honey. Hi. I have a show. 
I love you, and I am on a show. And look, I want to give a shout out to the people who are listening and who are retro gamers and retro content creators and say thank you to the people who are around us who deal with us constantly going, let's go look at some old shit. Mm. And uh, and they just go, okay. Like uh, my, my significant other is going to probably uh, be okay with me going to record store day tomorrow. Oh, you're gonna oh, go do that? What are you gonna What are you gonna nab? Are you looking for something? I, or what? I didn't even realize I had completely forgotten about it because I was trying to. And then Brian Ibbett of Coverville, also one of our other uh, producers on the Frog Pants Network, uh, had mentioned it, and I was like, "Oh man, now I now I've been reminded. So now I must go. So I don't even know what's out there right now. So I didn't, didn't even know you were. I didn't realize you were like a fan of uh, of the day. Of, you Dude, know? I got so much vinyl. I love vinyl. I don't have like I don't have crazy amounts of vinyl, but I've got a lot. Yeah, a bit. you like to. Yeah, that's as especially, retro as you get. Especially, especially, we've had some people in our community on the Discord server. Uh, specifically, was uh, sharing some stuff this past week where they had picked up a, I want to say some kind of Mario, uh, maybe Mario Kart music on vinyl. I'm not remembering it correctly, but I do know that they found it at some kind of store, and so I was like, oh shoot, I love. That's one of my favorite things is old school. Uh, retro video game music on vinyl. Something so sexy about it. Oh yeah, that's a good. That's a good Excuse time. Me. Well, yeah. th- let us know next week what you picked up, will you? I will. I will let us know. You let will, us I will know. Get some green. Let mm-hmm. us know. Okay. Let it snow. Got it. Yeah. Let uh, us know. Brian, what'd you get up to this week? Anything fun? Anything cool? Yeah, yeah. So I we we talked pre-show about my uh, one of the topics I was going to talk about, which was the different Amber Nick models. But if you're a patron supporter and you can you can flop back there and read all about that. If you have questions about your Amber Nicks, just let us know. We uh, we're always welcome to answer it. But I did stop by on the way home from the thrift store. Speaking of which, yeah. Um, and I found this nice green bag, and I'm like, what is this green bag? That's kind of nice. It's kind of heavy. And I I uh, I open it up, and I was like, ooh. Ooh, it's oh, a Wii what? Fit board, which you know that the, the I find these a pretty good bit. It's no big deal, but this has got a nice cover on it. First, I thought it was all dirty and gross, but then I realized, oh, that's like a plastic cover. Hmm. Now, I, but I did find one thing that I really liked that was in here, and I just dropped, so I got to pick it up. It was a nice little prize. It's great that you this. played that yeah. because. Look what was in this thing. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Look at the Mies. Look at that. Yeah. It is a Wii Fit a Plus bag, I guess, so you could take to your home gym. I guess you had to pack your own stuff in it. I don't know, but this is from the official uh, Club Nintendo. I guess you got this bag. So whoever, whoever owned this thing was a passionate person or got a really nice gift, which was uh, Wii Fit Plus. And it came with this nice, look at the little, look at the little, do you remember when, you remember when little Re- Re- Do you remember when Reggie Fizeme uh, did the whole "We Fit" is it? Yeah, that whole thing. We We Fit. You must l- uh, quit. Yeah, you must legit <laughs> acquit the We Fit. Um, I'm too legit to quit. That's right. That's cool, dude. I didn't know you were even on the on the hunt for one. Where'd you get it? I wasn't. I wasn't. I, I look. I see these things all the time in the thrift stores, and this particular thrift store is one I, I frequent, which is uh, for people who are homeless and trying to recover from. Uh, addiction and trying to you know trying to find our way back and that's that's something close to my heart uh my i had uh my my grandpa was actually an alcoholic and he was constantly needing help and so seeing seeing that struggle i i, I like to support these guys yeah and so you know i'll usually go in and i'll, I'll just say you know how much is this and they'll tell me this and i'll like here's some you know here's a donation as well i wasn't really looking for a wee fit board because i'm seeing them all that you see them all the time sure out there of you know with some of them having the cable some not um, and you know, they're neat, they're, they're neat, but this one actually, like I said, it, it came with like this nice official looking Nintendo greenish color that was for the Wii Fit Plus, And it had the nice pad on it. It's the nicest one I've seen ever. I've never mm. seen one this, this cool. And then it had that little bag inside. I opened it up and I was like, I saw that bag. I was like, shit, this is mine. It's yours. And you said, own it. Yep. Yeah, I went up and said, "How much?" And he said, "He said, uh, I don't know how much? How much you? How much you want to give me for that piece of crap?" Yeah. And I was, <laughs> we was just gonna throw it away. And I'm like, uh, he says three dollars. I was like, "Here's five. I was like, "Okay, let's go. Let's let's roll." Wow. But, All right. Uh, yeah. That's cool, man. That's cool. But you know, you want if you want one of these though, yeah, definitely go to your thrift stores and find one because if you need a Wii Fit board and you order it off eBay, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. These things are super heavy. Yeah. Super no, they were never, they were never just a light piece of plastic. That's for sure. Cause they had no. to hold your weight and no. stuff. They had to be, you know, yeah. All, all, they had a, all that they had a Wii Fit it. Uh, real quick here. I wanted to show you this. I downloaded a game. 
um, for this device for for Delta. See, I put a little standard little D-pad um, AB oh. button down there. Uh, this yeah. is the GBA version of Super Mario Advanced Four, which was actually Super Mario Brothers Three, but remastered. I love that game. Anyway, oh wow, it's got haptic feedback, dude. Here, let's hear the sound on it. Yeah. Okay. See, so. that's what I wanted. Just the way you're showing it right now is exactly what I was wanting, and they delivered. It looks like. You know what? This haptic really helps with the whole button thing. It really. Would. I didn't turn it on before. Now I did this time. So anyway, I'm just gonna run here. Let's just go World One. I wonder if your saves from like uh, RetroArch and stuff are savable. I don't know. I don't know. And like, uh, yeah, retro achievements and that kind of stuff. I got to dig a little deeper. I want to know. Oh my gosh, this is great. You know what? This is pretty good, dude. The, ha yeah, the buttons I are haptic, so they make they, they give you some feedback when you hit them, and it feels like you're hitting buttons. That's perfect. Weird. All right. You know what? I'll give this a big run for its time and really like so I can truly yeah. recommend or not. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm screwed with this. This is not good. <laughs> Having that on my phone, that, that's bad. That's a bad. bad thing. Instant Woo! access. That'll fit in my pocket because it already does. It already does. And it's already with me. Always. All right. Again, that's Delta for those looking. Let's dive into the show proper and our main topic today. Shall we play a game? Damn straight we should strike. Damn right we should play Damn a game. Strike. Damn straight. Damn straight. It's not even a word. I made it up here on the on the fly. Uh, we're gonna talk about games, and the game we're gonna talk about today is a twofer. It's roller coaster tycoon one and two. Uh, these games came out 99 and 2002. That was the difference. They really kind of don't look that different. They kind of look like the same exact game, in my opinion. It's, it's, it's pretty much the same. I mean, it's, aesthetically speaking, it looks the same. It plays the same. There's there's some there's some few improvements for two, but I mean, it's pretty much the same. Yeah, it's pretty much. The Are same. you? Uh, do you have a, a, any specific affinity for the series before we get too deep into what it is and where it came so, from? So. Yes, uh, as you know, I am an old school demo fool, and uh, I love getting free crap. And I never went and purchased Roller Coaster Tycoon at the store retail wise because I wasn't really into simulations in 1999. Mm -hmm. I would be shortly because The Sims would come out, um, but I wasn't really into it. But I did get one of these. I want to say it was attached to a box of Chex Mix, like on the back or on the inside. I can't remember, but it feels like that's how I got my hands on it, was through a box of cereal. Uh, and I, once I once I loaded it up, I loved it. <laughs> and I got addicted for a short time. Um, the Sims was a much bigger addiction for me for me personally, but the Roller Coaster Tycoon definitely spoke to me, and uh, I played, played tons of it. And well, man, Sim Sims was week. huge, man. Sims was, like, impossible to ignore. We should probably do The Sims yeah. at some point, because that's over 20 oh, years now, you know? Yeah, yeah, because I was playing that in, what, 2001? Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. Came, that came out also in 99, originally. Did it, it come out in 99 as well? Jesus. First Sims did, yeah. Um, yeah. And it is... Uh, I mean, The Sims changed the world. That's that's a game that you can't ignore. Like, yeah, and that, and that that goes to show you that we were right on the. If you look at Roller Coaster Tycoon and you look at the aesthetics of it, you know, it's top down. Uh, was it asymmetric? Was what's the word I'm looking for? Isometric. Isometric. Yep. Here's the words. Sure. Uh, and it you it really it really looks like an old game just from the from the get go for 1999. But it is such a beautiful, just such a beautiful the details are insane the number of small little pixels that are rendered in this game it is it is absolutely crazy no it is crazy how and it's dense, how dense it is it's very dense a lot going on um it's probably the first game i played that was a proper tycoon management game i think mm -hmm. back then because prior to that i don't think i would have i just can't think of anything else i played i'm sure someone at some point will say well wait didn't you play this in 97 or 6 and I go, oh, yeah. okay, sure, I guess I did. But you didn't make note of it, right? No, I didn't make any you note of it. And I would yeah. have remembered it because it would have sounded like this. Oh, you're going up. Oh, you're at the top. So that's that's what you would have been greeted with. Um, Microprose yeah, that, involved in this. Who was the other one? Uh what was that now? Who was it? Micro Microprose. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Microprose. So this was, uh, remember uh, Sid Meier? Meyer? Sid Meyer? Meyer? He Sid Meyer. Yeah. Games, right? Yeah. He uh, helped establish that Microprose. And Hasbro Interactive? Is that who That's was who it was. It's Hasbro. It, yep. Yep. Be, it was eventually Atari. Now it's all Atari all the time. But I believe it was Hasbro and Microprose. 
folks who got yeah. us started here. Yeah, that sounds right to me. It is uh it is pretty great. The idea, of course, uh is this, you know, take the reins of your own amusement park. All right. And yeah. there's uh you can play kind of an open sandbox version of the game, or you can play the sort of built in campaign thing. Think of any city builder or sim game, Sim City, the Sims itself. Um a game since then, like um, what's the the recent ones? The school one and the hospital Planet. one. What were the what was the oh, hospital yeah, hospital, one? Yeah, theme hospital. So th- it, this wasn't the Roller Coaster Tycoon uh, by Chris Sawyer, uh, single programmer by the way, in assembly madness. This guy made this game do more than it should have been able to do. Yeah, uh, it. Where was I going with that? Is I, I I I mentioned I mentioned Chris Sawyer and I couldn't I couldn't. Uh, couldn't I don't know. It was somewhere rails. big. You were heading somewhere cool. You were saying. Uh, oh no, I think oh, you were. Well, I think you're the first one. Yeah, it wasn't theme, the first theme one. Theme park, yeah. right? So, uh, Railroad Tycoon uh, was, of course, uh, uh, you know, kind of a where where they was thinking. They were like, oh well, uh, Chris Sawyer's already doing Transport Tycoon, and now we can, you know, there's been Railroad Tycoon and theme park was hitting pretty big uh right before then mm-hmm. uh so yeah so then you walk right into this and what makes this special is just the sheer amount of control that that comes in this game if you want to know you know what who would inspired later minecraft because mm-hmm. they took huge uh huge inspiration from this this you know basically building almost a game engine with that allows an, an individual to build their own thing inside of it mm-hmm. right and yeah. so that's what roller coaster tycoon does it allows you to just you, you just go nuts you got every option anything you can think of it's like playing a game with a bunch of buttons and switches and you can fiddle around and fiddle and fart around everything you want to mm-hmm. will you lose not really because there's scenarios that you can uh do like you'll open a theme park um and the goal will be like through one park season you need to get like a, a park rating of 600 mm-hmm. uh, and you need to have, you know, X number of 250 uh, guests who, who are in the park at any at any point in time. Right. And, you have, you know, you have goals like that. Mark. And the way those goals work is you can fail those yeah. goals, but only in time. It's like, yeah. oh, well, shit, I don't have 250 people yet. What am I doing wrong? Oh, let me scrap this end of the park and let me redo this. And then you'll eventually get to your goal. There is no fail state of like, uh oh, I got to get out. I got to quit. And that's what what I think I liked about it. It's what I like about modern versions of this. It's less about do it in a time frame or be perfect mm-hmm. in the first design or else you're screwed. It's here's a sandbox. Build the castle. Oh, shoot, your castle has a bad foundation. That's okay. Right. Redo your castle. It's fine. And just keep working time. at it until you get your goals. Exactly. And the, and the open version of the game or the, um, uh, the sandbox uh, way of playing it, right. it there, there's just no... It's just you deciding how you want to build your thing. Obviously, the focus in this game is way more on the coasters than it is almost anything else, uh, hence the name. Yeah. And if it's the if there was one part of the game that I didn't like, it was the folk that's I know it's called Roller Coaster Tycoon, but the focus on roller coasters I is a little fiddly sometimes. It's a little tricky to sort of just keep track of it all. You're in a 2D plane. You're not working in 3D here. Uh 3D right. iterations of this game now more modern versions of the game uh, I think are better in that regard because they're, they're things I can zoom around through and see them from different angles and, and all of this. And in this case, I just couldn't, you could flip it, what, 45 degrees at a time or 90 degrees at a time right. uh, in this game, yeah, you, but it wasn't enough for me. I didn't like that. Yeah. This is, this is quality of life improvements that would come later on. But yeah, uh, the way it was designed was to give you as much control as possible. However, it's not a fast acting game. So you would think with something like this, there would be a bunch of keyboard shortcuts, right? You're like, Oh, you'll just click, 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 click. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to interface, but no, there's a lot of painstakingly slow construction so once you get beyond doing the actual you know basically the theme part of it like if you you, you can set up a a, a, a merry-go-round which is like the first thing i always do whenever i start a park is yeah. you want to get something there with some music and it, it starts up right away and you can play the music and it makes you feel like you're at a park and then i'll usually move on to something a little more complex like a roller coaster you can usually choose uh between things that are already pre-designed or you can make your own and that's where the fun in this game really comes into play uh, in in the in the details of putting your own coaster together, but it also can be a big pain in the butt oh, yeah. because each piece of track has to be laid by uh, choosing the, the 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 path, the the height of which what direction is going in, 
uh, whether it needs a pull chain at that part. Uh, and then you have to you have to choose how much curvature is in each section. And there's only so many things you can do in that part. And you just kind of have to like click buttons, click, yep. click, click, yep. click. And uh, it's real painstakingly slow, but it's very satisfying if you get it right, which I usually did not. Yeah. How many death coasters did you build, Scott? Oh, I've, I've, I've killed people coasters? left and right. I'm surprised I didn't get sued <laughs> sued out of the park. That's the other thing is so the, game, the game encourages you to, to be creative without yeah. too much downside of, of wiping out 10 people on a coaster that doesn't work right, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. what this game eliminates is all the testing, all of the verification, all of the security, <laughs> all of the inspection stuff. You don't do any of that shit. You just build a thing well, and you, go, well, I hope this works. You're supposed to, uh, you, you do have a mode for testing and you're supposed to test it before you put real people on it. I, I, I can see now. Scott you don't have to like though. The, you do not no, have, you to. Don't have to. <laughs> I can see Scott plays this like he played the Sims, which you, you lock somebody in a bathroom and wait until their bladder explodes. So yeah, Scott's just like test. We don't need no test. Yeah. Who but yeah, test? ideally you would test your coaster to test it for like uh, intensity and excitement because those are kind of some things that are going to determine whether or not they got to go puke. Uh, in your park, and how many uh, how many p people you're gonna have walking around cleaning up puke in your park? I had a lot. Yeah, I, had, I have a lot of hires for that. I have a ton of I had a ton of pukers that that also, but that helps you because that helps you go. All right, well, maybe I shouldn't have so many loops in this ride, but also maybe I need bathrooms closer to the thing so people can yak yeah. in the bathrooms. Um, but then you realize, well, nobody wants to go to a park where they puke the whole time, so maybe just make a better <laughs> ride. <laughs> And it's fun to scrap stuff, start over. You get money back when you scrap things. So the yeah. resources you spent aren't really spent. You can get them back if you need to. I like that. I was curious about that. I didn't dig too deep. Now, if you want to find people who have dug too deep, because there are so so many levels of complexity in this game that it's not always obvious uh, the, uh, the impact of your choices. So um, one of the things I was curious about is like, okay, is it always exactly the same amount of money returned to me. And also you have a running total each month that passes by, which is your, I think we did we mention the coastal seasons, March to October. No. Um, as, as it passes by each month, you know, you got a little tally of how much you're making, how much you're spending and that kind of stuff. And, uh, you also have a loan calculator. So there's a loan, super cheap loan, by the way, in 1999, the interest oh, rates were yeah. outrageously low. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you you don't know all the factors, but it's a lot of fun going on to YouTube in different places. This is probably the most content I've ever seen for any game we've played so far because so many people are discussing things like where exactly do you put the bathrooms? What kind of impact does that have on the people? You yeah, know, yeah. what happens if you put uh, the food receptacle places in certain places? Is it should you put trash cans places? Should you put uh, park benches? Because not all that stuff is discussed in the in the nice little manual you get for Roller Coaster Tycoon, nor is it explained in the very short, brief tutorial. And so some of us just discovering it along the way, which is kind of half the fun, right? Yeah, it's discovering most Discovering what works and what doesn't. Now, this thing that's free, I know we're jumping around a little bit here, but there's like a free yeah. thing that people are playing now that is this old school kind of way of playing this game. If I wanted right. to right now, Brian, because I didn't mess with this or even look at it much. I know you you fiddled with it a little bit more. But can I stop yes. everything and go, you know what? I'm going to go play Roller Coaster Ask Tycoon, and it's called, uh, what's it called? Open, open, uh, open RCT2? Yes, Open RCT2 kind of picks up where uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon left off and then improves a whole bunch of things, the quality of life stuff, like Scott was talking about earlier, like, he doesn't like just the three levels of zoom because these this your parts can get very hard to see once they get to a certain size as far as what's going on and a lot of activity going on. And this allows you to zoom out much further, zoom in much closer uh, and allows you to give you all these quality of life things like speed ups. You couldn't speed up the original uh, roller coaster tycoon. So that was kind of a bad thing in some of the scenarios. If you're like, OK, I've got to accomplish this and I started getting better. And I went back and played the scenarios and I was like, oh, Jesus, I finished the scenario like in like the first two months. And mm -hmm. like, do I follow this through and watch it the rest of the way or I just quit mm. uh, because you can't speed it up in the open RCT2. You do now open RCT2 is a community project. It doesn't have any of the original assets and things stored on it. So you have to have the Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 to be able to play it. If you purchase 
the uh, the one that is on sale currently, which is the roller to roller coaster tycoon. Let me make sure I get this right before I tell you, because <laughs> there's a million of these damn things. If you go to Steam or Good Old Games, you'll see Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic, and you'll see Deluxe. Yeah, and they're both on super sale right now. Yeah, one of them just includes the original game and the two expansion packs. Okay, and then the Deluxe, I believe, oh, or is the other way around. Then the other one <laughs> <laughs> includes. Uh, oh, okay, okay, that's this way. Is Classic is the one you want. It has the first. It has the first. It has both the first two games. Plus the expansions. The deluxe only includes the original. Okay. Yeah, only includes the original with the two add-on packs, which is not going to open. Was not going to work with Open RCT two because it needs the uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon two engine for some things. Right. Right. No, that makes but sense. This is the if you're going to play it, don't do like I did. I went out and I went to archive.org, found the uh, serial boxed version that somebody had ripped. Uh, of the first one, then I fired up my uh, Win ninety eight uh, emulator. Uh, as it PCEM? That's the one I used. Yeah. I didn't use. A, a, oh, you didn't use your. Uh, okay, I was curious. So if you're going to use that same stuff you've been using lately, but something else, eh? Yeah, no, no. I used my PCEM because it was just the easiest way to do it with this particular version. It allows you to emulate uh, the hardware level of a Pentium mm. two hundred and thirty three processor, and so I said, perfect. That's a good time to do it. And then I installed it and I played it. And it was pretty good. It's pretty even even through emulation because Chris Sawyer made this thing like he did it in assembly, which is like one step removed from freaking, uh, you know, speak, speaking the zeros and ones. Um, and it is so optimized. It ran great. But I didn't like the fact that I couldn't zoom in and zoom out like I wanted to. Uh, so that's when I said I'm going back to open RCT2, which you can install on Windows 10, 11. And I yeah, Mac you can play that. You can play that and, now. And you can just get in there and play. And I think that's what yeah. I'm going to try this week. I didn't mess with it here. I just emulated yeah. the old game. Yeah. I wanted to feel the old experience. It's also available on various stores and stuff, so you can get it on good old games. And I think Steam has a version. Mine's on GOG. Um, yeah. For two, anyway. I didn't try one. Um, yeah. I think two is a better game, but two is just a smoother experience. It just feels refined. Like, like a lot of sequels, they got, you know, they learn stuff two, and two got, two was also fairly well received. One of course was got lots of kudos. Uh, two didn't get as many people just confirmed and said, yes, it's still a great game, but it's more like a content add on. Mm -hmm. It's not really that much of an improvement there, but there are some small little improvements like, uh, you know, a little better AI and the, the AI works a little bit better. Um, I think it can, it's a little easier to, to build things underground. Like in the first one, it was complicated because you would have to, uh, you had to do more, uh, digging and, and, and trying to focus on that stuff. And I think only the roller coasters actually went underground. I don't think anything else could be placed any lower. Like you couldn't put like a, you know, underground, uh, uh, ride or something that wasn't a coaster you couldn't have like a carousel underground Whoa! Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> you I, I i think in this in and then in the second one you could uh you could stack like scenery and stuff so like if you built like a uh like a like in the tutorial uh of like the little have you ever been to a park where you can get on the old the old timey cars and ride on a rail you get you, you hop in you let your kids drive it's mm -hmm. like hey kids you want to drive yeah they're like, the um, like yeah they used to do we it had is. one at our local thing here called lagoon where it was like um old cars and i forgot that it was like a gas station and you get in yes. these little old ass cars and then drive around yes. look like up city or whatever kids are so excited because yeah. you're like yeah they, get, they start driving like this is shit <laughs> i'm on a track yeah but anyway like on stuff like that, you can you can build something. Then you can build like uh, you can you can build multiple levels. Like you can build a uh, an enclosure so that part of the ride goes through it, and that's supposed to increase the excitement level or the enjoyment level for your characters. And so there's some quality of life, but not a whole bunch. It's still pretty much uh, the first one. Uh, just but the one big thing, the one big thing I didn't realize, I thought that Roller Coaster Tycoon went out and said, "Hey, Six Flags." We want to we want to use some of your parks to put in here. Yeah. And Six Flags is like, all right. No, it actually was the opposite. Uh, uh, if, from what I understand, Six Flags licensed. So I guess I don't know who approached who, but I oh. think Six Flags gave uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon a little bit of mm, cash injection. 
uh, interesting. to be included. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought I figured it was the other way around as well, because that's usually what you do when you're a small, especially yeah. back then. Nobody, you know, games and how your your properties, you know, would get featured in a game. Nobody was thinking mm-hmm. this way about that stuff. Nobody's thinking it was the opposite of what you should have. But I, but now, once again, all right. Full disclosure. I don't know that for a fact. That's just what I was reading. Yeah. I read that on the internet. And I can't even find the source now. So whatever. Yeah. Um, but I was pretty excited to be playing some Six Flags stuff because I, I lived, you know, just a couple hours away from a Six Flags. Went there many times as I was growing up, and so it was fun to be able to imagine uh, making my own Six Flags or recreating one. Uh, they actually do have some Six Flags you, that were already exist, and you just start the park up there as a scenario, um, and you jump in and and you, and you make your own changes. That's and, awesome. Uh, so Scott, how what what's your theory when you're playing Roller Coaster Tycoon? Yeah, um, there's a couple different ways to make money. Yeah, uh, you can you can uh, charge a park entrance, uh, and or you can charge a ride fee. Now, all the parks I've usually gone to, I prefer to go to a park that has one entrance fee, and then all the rides are free. I yeah. don't like to pay additional money once right. I get inside. Hundred percent agree with that. Like you could do. Yeah. There's some newer games that are called. Uh, what's that? There's there's. It's not by these people or even Planet the, Coaster. Planet Coaster. Thank you. Planet yes. Coaster lets you make some choices in that regard that lets you do things like Disney's Fast Pass, uh, you know, up charges for, for, for things like that. There's a lot of complicated crap in there um, if you choose to use it. But for me, and this is true in real life as well, I want to make a mm-hmm. park where they go through a little uh, entrance thing, they go through some turnstiles, they pay the 20 bucks, and they play, and they get to go do whatever the hell they want while they're in there. Only time I want to pull my wallet out when I'm at the th- when I'm at the park is when I'm I'm buying a giant turkey leg or a, an overpriced soda. Yeah, if you're buying food I'm, or if you're in an arcade, I get that those are maybe separate things or you're buying tickets yeah. for th- you know throwing the ball to knock the bottles down or whatever. Those kinds of things, that's fine. Those make sense to me. They're microtransactions, but your main game is the $25, $30, $50 ticket you bought at the gate. And that's how it should be. And that's how I play Roller Coaster Tycoon as well. So I would initially, when you start, you'll you'll see like I I think some of the first scenarios in the first one, I think the park entrance is free at Frontier. Um, And then when you start adding rides, it's like you have a base price. I think the carousel is like a dollar or something. I'm like, bump that. And so I, I just put an entrance fee on. And I start knocking everything down for free. I've I've uh, played around a little bit with with premium rides. Like if I put a big steel roller coaster up, I may like add like a couple of dollars there. That's not unheard of. I've been places where they have new rides or trying to offset sure. the cost a little bit. Yeah. Eh, it made sense to me. I'm a very practical person when I play these kind of games. And I think Chris Sawyer was too. When he started this, I don't think he even had like a passion for roller coasters, but somewhere between the time he was uh, doing his transportation tycoon, uh, which was prior to this, where it was just, you know, transports, just like what you think it is, trains, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, he fell in love with roller coasters and he's he's ridden like by the time he got through making these games and stuff, he had ridden hundreds and hundreds of roller coasters, visiting roller coasters all over the place, all over the world. This guy's got a problem. He yeah. got addicted. He's into it. He got addicted. Yeah. And uh, he brought that addiction uh, to us. And, uh, <laughs> and I, we're I'd grateful like to, for I'd it. I'd like to thank him for that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like it's, it's uh, for a lot of people, this is the high watermark. And um, yeah. this is, it never got better than this. I would argue that that's not true. I also think people should give some time to Planet Coaster and Planet Coaster. I think there's a two. You you should be glad for Planet Coaster because uh, we we wouldn't. Uh, so that's developed by Frontier Developments and uh, who ha- who has staff. This uh, includes developers who worked on the Roller Coaster Tycoon series. So there's definitely some uh, connective tissue there. Yep. And yeah, I did you. So did you, did you charge people to go to your bathroom, Scott? Is that a, is that, <laughs> no, is that I did not move? do that. That is a huge dick move. Like in real life, if you do that to me, I'm not right. coming to your park ever again, dude. Ever. Yeah. So yeah. there, I, I, let me say it this way. I like a game that gives me those options. If I right. want to play chaotic evil in my playthrough, <laughs> I like that there's options to do this and to where you can just kind of screw your, screw your patrons and all that. But I, right. I personally can't play that way, even though I'm talking about little pixel people who don't matter to me. It's still something in my guts. I just doesn't sit right with me. So I can't, can't- do it. I can't. So when you go to sleep, all you can hear is the screaming, but it's not from the roller coasters. <laughs> no. It's from people trying to get into the bathroom yeah. for the 50 cent, right? Yeah, exactly that. Um, oh. So for me, <coughs> I want to be able to give the amenities that people are going to want. I yeah. want to have services, games, uh, attractions 
that they want, and I want them to be safe, although I will have a good time with some crappy builds. It's fine. <laughs> it's half the fun, right? You, and there's no, yeah. there's no real reason. It's not like real people are dying, so it's kind of fun to screw around with. Um, but really what I want is just like a, a really tightly run setup. I want to feel like I, I do this with, by the way, Zoo Tycoon, uh, the, yes. and also Planet zoo or whatever the planet coaster people also do a zoo thing yeah they have a jurassic yeah. park thing i like all these kinds of games i love them and yeah. when things are like peak efficiency that's what i'm aiming for is that i don't think i'm very good at it actually but i love the feeling of wow this loop i've made you know i just I, realized something this is why i love those like caesar caesar three uh pharaoh uh uh just, Middle Kingdom, all those games that those those uh, I forgot the name of the developer, but the Sierra games they were they were city builders, yeah. but they were like you weren't controlling every citizen, they were just right. controlling the streets, and then you would add things that would help them be better or grow their houses more or whatever. And I realized that the reason I think I like those is the same thing. You're aiming for efficient cities in yeah. an ancient setting, but efficient nonetheless. Don't have stuff too close to pollution. Don't have things next to dangerous areas. Uh, make sure that you have walls that are high enough so that when raiders come, they can't get in. Like that kind of thinking is this game too. And I think yeah, that's why it, it, why it appeals so much to me. I really like it. I I love it. I love that you start with uh, you know a certain amount of space. You build into it, and it, it fills up very quickly. Because when you first start, you get a, you get a scenario where you start a new uh, you'll start a new campaign, and it's like uh, they're not called campaigns, but anyway, uh, you'll start a new area, and you'll have to like, oh, do I need to expand once they get to a certain point because when you start using those prefabbed uh, roller coasters i'm not i'm not brave enough to build a wooden roller coaster that takes up almost the full size of my park i will make a small roller coaster that'll have you know some hills and you know some turns and stuff but it's going to be pretty quick and short I've I've placed some that were huge that like almost took the whole map up and it's like I have to go like oh my god I can't even fit this thing in here or this the size of real coasters it really is yeah and uh, but yeah I'm I'm with you I'm I'm maximum efficiency um, the thing I think I was most obsessed with uh, at the end of this week while playing this game was trying to figure out how the hell to get the money out of those people's pockets so um, the good thing is each uh, each person who's coming in um has a, a part goer ha you can click on them and you can see their thoughts a lot of times they're not thinking anything but mm -hmm. it, one of the things i love is the fact you can see how much money they have in their pocket you can see this is the greatest thing man if this is like the most devious thing that could ever happen if, if it happened in real life if the actual park managers could look into your pockets and know how much money you have mm. but that's exactly what this game allows yeah. you to do yeah. you can you can look to see and it's like oh okay this person paid this much money to get in um, and they've spent this much money and they have this much money in their pockets. And I could never get above like getting like 10 to 15% of their money out of their pockets. Mm. I just couldn't get above that rate. And I really felt like I should be able to get, you know, I, I expect these people to leave penniless. Yeah. I you want to break spend them. every damn dollar they got. That's right. What are you even doing here? You're here for money spend, spend it. This is Disneyland, it. damn it. You're going to walk out of here poor. We promise. And no matter how many cheeseburger, uh, soda, ice cream, cotton candy, balloon, umbrella stands, uh, amazing rides I got, I still couldn't get people to part with, but with so much money. And I think maybe one of my problems was that every time I was constantly getting awards for uh, best value park. Yeah. By the way, I love getting the little awards and stuff. I was like, like a best value park, and I'm like, oh, then I'm not charging enough. No, yeah, then you, yeah, that, you don't want to be the best value park yeah. because nobody, not nobody only will the best, respect best you. Value. They'll go there, I but you're going to walk get... around going, I yeah. had a great time and I spent maximum amount of money. Yeah. You don't want riffraff <laughs> in there going there because it's cheap. You're getting the wrong clientele, no. man. Yeah. That's no, right. I, get it. I, but, uh, but I, I, it, like you said earlier, though, I love everything about the game except for, uh, you, you really got to, I, I really recommend doing the open RCT too, yeah. because modern screens, when, if, if you play this game, uh, at, at like 640 by 480, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be squinting. Yeah. You're going to need something that's going to be able to scale out to full scale, which that's what open RCT two lets you do. Yeah. Uh, and then you can really zoom in, even if it's a little bit blurry and pixelated, I'm fine with that. I'd prefer that over not being able to see. Um, and especially when you start the hide and stuff because like you said when you're trying to spin around yeah. and you're developing your uh when you're placing stuff 
it, it's sometimes difficult to see. It's like, where is this at exactly? This is isometric. I think yeah. it goes right here. And it really helps if you can turn on the, uh, the height scaling. It'll yeah. give you numbers. They'll yeah. say, like, this is how many feet it is. And right. oh, by the way, you can, it, this is totally international game, right? Because it allows you to choose whatever local measurement of height, uh, temperature, or whatever. Right. If you're a Celsius, if you're a Celsius person, good, good news. Celsius on. Yep. Guess what? If you're a dollar yeah. person, good deal. Put on dollars. It's you rather, dollars. yeah, you rather have British pounds. I think at the time, yeah. anyway, I don't know. It's maybe it's they, euros uh, yeah. now. Our RC2 maybe has euros. Maybe. Yeah. That's or a good something. question. I don't know. I know that some of the more modern ones do, but anyway, yeah, you get a lot of options what? like that. You got to tailor, you get to yeah. tailor your world the way you want it. Uh, if I only had one tiny complaint, it would be that I think instead of everybody working on, you know, open source versions of a big 2D world, it would be really right. cool if we got a new roller coaster tycoon that is still this angle of top down isometric, but right. uses all little tiny 3D assets. Uh, think yes. like the most recent and unfortunately disappointing for other reasons, uh, SimCity, which had amazing graphical treatment, uh, but gave you the feeling of I'm up above this giant city. I don't need to walk around first person. Just give me this right. this kind of dainty. I'm working on a tiny little dia diorama town, uh, or in this case, theme park, but make it like little 3D models and I can rotate and stuff. Yes, it's yeah. I mean, I I love these little people walking around. I'm with you. And after after Chris Sawyer, he I think he did some uh, I think he did some consulting for Roller Coaster Tycoon Three, which was 3D and it's a little more modern, was kind of outside of our play retro time frame um but once it went there it got a little bit mm, not as good mm. uh it just it it didn't have the microness of it the the smallness that i love of managing little micro people and micro mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and yeah but i'm with you i would like to see something that could that could perform on today's machines yep uh but give that same microness because when we, when we first got into 3d stuff everything was it was chonky and it wasn't fun. It was like, ah, and you could, you could ride some of this stuff as well. And some of the later versions where you could like get first person kind of in it. Yeah. And I was like, eh, yeah. this is kind of disappointing. I, I, I miss just people screaming and then throwing me some, some thought bubbles of, I want something more exciting than, uh, Brian's roller <laughs> twisties. <laughs> yeah. Twister. Uh, yeah. What do you oh, know you about name everything too? Did what? you name all your stuff? I do oh, always. Titty yeah. Twister? Always. I didn't yeah. call it titty twister, but I would call them things like, you know, vomit comet and ah know, yes stuff like that that's why i named that's why i named the restrooms yeah well you should yeah the, vom the vomit comet are the restrooms um yeah I, I like doing that i like naming right my park and everything in it and a game I'm, that lets me do that is always is always good so and boy you could you could just just forget about playing the game just if you could just get on youtube and just look up roller coaster tycoon and look at all the crazy shit people have built over the years like uh uh, this, uh, roller coasters that go on for so long that they've been on the ride for like 30 years. I mean, you could just, this game is so optimized. You can build something insanely huge. This just crazy. I watched a whole video this week on uh, a euthanasia type of coaster that was uh, prototyped by somebody who was like, this would be the best way to go out. You know, it's like, how humane to to slowly lose consciousness until you die from the <laughs> uh, the corkscrews of g forces yeah. Yeah. uh but man you could you can deep dive so deep into this thing and the thing i love the most about what's going on right now is with open rct2 um they've taken the community step even further and you can actually log in online multiplayer i don't know if you can play multiplayer i'm still i i didn't get far in this part you definitely can log into other parks that other people have I did not test to see if I could build anything on those parks. Yeah. But I feel like you probably can. You probably I'm can. I'm kind of obsessed with the idea of setting up my own roller coaster tycoon server. Do you kind have any of, do you have any interest in playing uh let's see, do I own it? No, I don't. If you have do you have any interest in playing the twenty fifth anniversary roller coaster tycoon game? Uh wrote it's just roller coaster tycoon three complete edition. That came out right. in twenty twenty on PC, but isn't this still based on this is based on an on the old on an old game though, right? Like when did three come out originally? <laughs> Hold on. Like two thousand eight, two thousand four, two thousand would that be twenty five years? It looks no. it's not twenty five. Three must have been well, if they say it's twenty five in twenty twenty, it had to be, right? Um I think it's 
<sighs> close to the feel. That's the problem. The, uh, that that's game. the one of the reasons why I said at the top of the show, if you want to know how to play the first roller coaster uh, tycoon, and maybe even the second one, uh, we'll tell you. And that's what we needed to do because I, I didn't get deep into three and everything else. But there are so many versions out there. There's there's you can play this on mobile. Yeah. Um, there, there was a whole bunch of quality of life things. Uh, Chris Sawyer came back and helped work on the mobile thing that added uh, touchscreen uh, support. I think that's the deluxe version that you'll see. Yeah, um, has the touchscreen support, uh, so you can play this on tablets, which is a lot of fun because once again, like I said, not a lot of keyboard interfacing. Mm. Almost all of it. It reminded me very much of like almost like Windows three one because. Everything has a pop-up window. Yeah. Um, you'll click on a, you know, you'll click on ride attractions that you want to build and a little window will pop up and it'll have a whole bunch of tabs you can choose from to get different, uh, you know, d- data points, uh, allow you to start rides, turn rides off, test rides. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's almost its own complete system of, of visual uh, windows. Yeah. Windows. Windows. You know, Windows. Uh, M- windows. So it's, it's, it's very, in other words, it's very mouse centric and not necessarily shortcut keyboard centric. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, with that. so it 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 lends itself to touch screen. I wish I could. Okay, so I just want to say something about these guys. Uh, Frontier Developments. That's who makes the newer stuff, the Planet Coaster yeah, stuff. Planet Coaster. They all also made Zoo or Planet Zoo, and that's still popular. Yes. They made, like I said, Jurassic Park, but they also publish um, the uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon Three. Uh, two and mm. one, they don't. Uh, but so right. they've they've clearly got some rights to this. This is what I would like them to do. Uh, get, make a Planet Coaster two. That's what I'm asking for. It's been since 2016. It still looks great. It's a beautiful game. But I think it's time. I own that game. I want to play it again. I think I might even install it after all our conversation this week. But listen up, fellers. It's time for you to innovate <laughs> again. It's 2024, baby. <laughs> time to time to rock it. So anyway, yeah, you'll, you'll have to pick up the torch because Chris Sawyer after, uh, I, I think he went back and he did a few things, but pretty much after roller coaster tycoon two, he, he kind of said, okay, I'm, I've done the things I want to do. And you can't blame him because things were moving very rapidly when he was programming in assembly for the first one. Mm-hmm. Nobody was doing that. No, nobody was no soul developer was out there. He was a total, uh, you know, unique unicorn as far as that goes in 1999 nobody was freaking doing that no not like that freaking assembly who was writing an assembly i think maybe the doom guy the doom guys were doing that but that was was earlier like you you know 98 i guess whatever you're comfortable in you just do what you do but yeah you do what you do so yeah but he kind of was like uh yeah this whole 3d world is different systems and it does take a totally different mindset to to work inside of an an engine versus talking, you know, assembly where you're, you're pointing to to memory instructions and saying, go here, go there, do this, be efficient. Um, it's a really different concept. And I, I think you, you can really feel it in the game of how meticulous he is with every data point that would attach itself to another data point and really smart in that way. And I don't, I don't think modern engines would give him that nice, good feeling that he probably got back then so he's kind of he's kind of stepped away from most of this Taz even says, though he still owns the even though i think he still owns i don't think he still owns a lot of the rights to it yeah, so yeah um yeah does he he's still got okay keep that money rolling yeah, in there buddy he, he was smart because uh you can watch some great interviews and uh some documentaries on chris sawyer um in his development of this in transport tycoon um because he talks about he he basically just made the games for himself mm. And then he had finished pretty much finished games and took it to the to publishers and said, yeah, I, can, I can make this game for you. And they go, OK. And so then he would allocate. He'd go like, OK, so I got this many months to finish. And he would just like, you know, here's this part. Mm. <laughs> but it's pretty much already done. Yeah. So it's it it brilliant. So he, he was able to leverage all of that into making great deals, because if, if you show up, there's a big difference between work for hire and selling a, you know, a finished product. You know, if you if you got a finished product, you come in, you sell it. You're like, boom, you have all the control because you've proved yourself. You're there. They don't have to invest anything into it other than, you know, to market it and, and, and that kind of low risk. Taz low in the risk, chat right? says that RT or RCT Classic is great on iPad, although you kind of need a pencil. That's sort of a must. I'm looking at it now. I didn't even know this was a thing. For six bucks, I could own this. Maybe I'll do it. Yes, it's $5.99. And I think uh, Chris Sawyer, since he has a, still a say-so, 
I I read some varying things, but the thing that I heard from Chris Sawyer was that he agreed to come back and work with the uh, that stuff uh, to kind of get it where it needed to be with the with the uh, condition that they wouldn't have a bunch of microtransactions because he doesn't even he likes it in the park, but he doesn't like it in the app. Mm. <laughs> I could see that. You know, he's an old school yeah, dude. Yeah. I get it. Let's see, this has been yeah. out since 2017. I might try that too. There's also Roller Coaster Tycoon Touch. What the hell is that? I think that's the one that everybody shits on. Is that the one everybody shits oh, on? I think yeah, that's the one. This that's is like, the this is like a typical I free think to play they, they, bullshit. They take away game. a whole bunch of uh, they take away a whole bunch of things like to uh, for for a name of of uh, to make it uh, a function on the on the hardware. So I think. It's, it's only in spirit and skin that it operates. It's yeah. not that it, it uses. It's also the about a bunch of timers and shit. You got to wait for things. You got to buy coins to do certain stuff. Like this, this is, yeah. this is mobile nightmare. Yeah. Don't go that game. way. Yeah, I'm not playing that. I think I'm going to install Planet Coaster again, honestly. I didn't realize how I, I literally took me almost two days this week before I even started playing for the first time for real, just mm-hmm. because I had to go in. And peek at all the freaking options of how you could play it now and what would be the closest to the original experience. Right. Um, so here's a little breakdown, real quick. Give it in to me. In case you weren't listening, um, Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic and Deluxe, they'll give you the most authentic and nostalgic experience, uh, closely adhering to the original gameplay mechanics. Mobile is more modernized and streamlined, um, but you know, you don't get everything necessarily. And, and if you if you play that stupid crap you just talked about, you get some monetization stuff. Yeah. Um, but oh, yeah. <laughs> Open RCT two is definitely the way to go if you're just wanting to to. It's nostalgia. It's got it's got everything. You just need to make sure that you have the underlying uh, the underlying game purchased either by CD or you purchase on Steam. Good old games. Wherever. So if you but want that, the- if you want that the OG experience and what that yeah. felt like. And but you want to do it on a modern display and all, you know a few other conveniences and quality of life things. That sounds like probably the way to go. Yeah, it's definitely. Way I'm going to go. install that as well. I'm kind of a man. It's you know once in a while we'll do a topic and I go, oh uh, that was great to play a couple times, but I'm good and tell her now. Okay, what's our next one? Right. Yeah. This is yeah. one of those yeah. where I'm going to get stuck for a while. I'm going to play them. Yeah. I'm a little worried that I'm, I'm going to start a server. I'm yeah. really I'm worried. <laughs> You're going to have a server. So we got Unreal servers. We got a Planet Tycoon yeah. uh, or Planet uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon server going. What else, I'd Brian? I'd love to see that. We we still have our Minecraft server from back in the day of another podcast. That thing still exists, believe it or not. The Final Score uh, Minecraft server still still out there, still going today, thanks to the community that that supports it. We don't do anything for it other than mention it occasionally. So who's who's running that for us or uh, doing that? Do you know who that is? Do I don't want to say because I don't want to get it wrong. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah, it's been it's been about six months since I checked in last. I'm a bad Minecrafter. You're a terrible mi- Minecrafter. You're the worst I'm a kind bad of Minecrafter. Minecrafter. Yeah, maybe maybe you know try be better, Brian. Be better. I I need to be better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, all right. Well, let's talk about two real quick, just as a brief thing. Hey, guess what, everybody? Two sounds like one. It's a little bit more like ambient stuff going on. A little more music, a little more stereo. We went a little crazier on that front, but it's still kind of the, you know, it's what it's what yeah. you expect out of a sequel like that. You, you can paint more stuff. There's more objects. There's more scenarios. There's more of everything. The tutorials go a little bit deeper. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a very few quality of life improvements, like I said, like being able to build uh, above and below ground and that kind of stuff with a lot more objects and double stacking stuff and... Um, uh, th- there was some a little greater community content. That's when we start, first started seeing the community content come into play. Mm-hmm. I do like, I did really like the way you could, uh, the designer for the roller coaster. So I always had trouble having a park in the first one, having a park and then going, okay, I want to add a roller coaster and trying to manage that while at the same time managing the park itself. Right, right. So now you can, you can, you could, there's a specific place where you can go and you can, you can, you know, build, build outside, like in a, a total empty void where you just build the ride. And then later on, you can put it into, uh, into the park, which right. I, I, that, that's so much better. That is so pretty cool. A lot less pressure. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I like that too. Um, 
those kind of quality of life things uh, are meaningful in a game yeah. like this. So more of that, please. And also, you know, mm-hmm. the more community behind it, the more cool stuff we're going to get. Hopefully, developers will keep making full blown games like this and not focus on freaking microtransaction loaded bullshit mobile games. Mm-hmm. That would be great. Um, like I said, I only want microtransactions to happen in my game, in, inside the game world. I you mean like to, in the world read, of like reality? I'm, no, exactly. I want to buy a burger place on the corner of this place <laughs> in the game. I want to sell right. these right here. I got it. Here's a burger for you. I'm going to sell this burger. It's fake, by the way. Oh, that's a nice burger, though. I had an Etsy no, guy. You, I, I like that you had to tell me it was fake. Like the way you were holding it, I was like, "That's a real burger." He's got. <laughs> I mean, it looks like it's one of the. This Is guy, that the- this guy makes them for restaurant displays, so you put them in your oh. under glass and stuff. So I bought one from this how guy. Did you, oh, okay, I was say, how did you get one? I bought it. He makes them, Very sells nice. them on Etsy. So he's got all you kinds sell, of should, all kinds of I fake like food, little, little piece of pie on a plate, that kind of stuff. I probably, you, know how, you know how I know it's fake? Mm. It looks it looks edible. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little too real, therefore it's fake. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, that's it. Those are your games. They're great. Go play them, everybody. They're cheap right now, too, me, by the way. Also super, cheap. Yeah, that's because it's the 25th anniversary from the release of the original. Yeah, it's 1999. Now it's 2024. So, yeah, it's... it's uh, I, I only reason why I even brought it to the forefront of my mind is because Satari has been sending me emails over the last uh, month going, oh, you got to get the signed uh, lithograph roller coaster uh, tycoon 25th anniversary uh, the hoo-ha. Yeah. And I'm like... <laughs> No, but I'll go play the game. <laughs> no, Sawyer, maybe a little bit of money. It's like, no, yeah. I don't really need that, but thanks for that. No, but thank you. Thank you so much, Atari. Uh, all right, I'm going to dump, dump, dump. I'm going to jump right to this. Destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to play a little uh, <laughs> Guess My Game. It's a game where we play old audio from an old game. We tell each other the date, uh, that is the year and the platform, and then we have five guesses or five choices to choose from. Uh, so I've only each other's got game. four choices. <clears throat> oh my gosh, look at you. Oh yeah, you're right. We only do four. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't mean to suggest there was an E on here. There's no E. E, all of the above. Yeah, there's only A through D. Uh, Brian, I'm going to start with the mine. This is going to be a little tricky this week, I think. I've decided I've been oh, going well. too easy. You've been getting too good at this. All right. Dang, I went the other way because I was like, I've been doing too hard. And I was like, maybe I need to go easier. We'll see. We're about to Four find areas. out. This is the year 1980 and we are in the arcade. Okay, here's your sound, and then we'll talk about what what we think. Here we go. Wow. It's like somebody just ate Pac-Man. I know, it does sound like Pac-Man's having a ghost problem. Okay, there is your your basic exposure to the audio, and I'll give you your choices, and then I will play some more, because it kind of all sounds the same. Give me, give me, give me. Your options are A... Ozma Wars, B, Radar Scope, C, Star Raiders, or D, Temple of Afshay. Now, here's the important thing. Asfay, how do you say it? Here's the thing to note. All four of these came out in 1980. Okay? 79, 80, but mostly. One's a Nintendo game, right? Uh, Well, that's for you to decide. I don't know. (laughs) I'm not telling you any of that. (laughs) Remember, it's just now you just have to choose. So here's some more sound. Okay, I got it. I got it. And, All right. I, and you're gonna be and you're gonna be amazed by how I know. All right. All right. But rewind that last little bit of music you just played. Uh, back here. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, that, do, 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 that gives do, do. it away. Does it? If 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 I'm right. If okay. I'm right. All right. All right. Uh, I, I don't think it's a Osmo Osmo Wars. I don't even know what the hell that is. Yeah, it's C a game. sounds like Star Raiders. That sounds good, but I don't. I, it, was that even at the arcade? It was. D Temple of Ash Abshe. Yeah. Um, no, well, sir. Also, at the but arcade. what it does sound like. Yeah. What it does sound like is uh, Donkey Kong, which uh, I believe uh, they put Donkey Kong uh, in Radar Scope arcade machines. If I if if I remember our, our Donkey Kong episode correctly, am I am I even close? So you're hearing the. Do, 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 yeah. Do, do, yeah. Do, do, do. Yep. Damn it, you're a bastard. You got it right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I know my arcade. I hardware. was worried about it because I thought because I do this too. Like if I'll I'll yeah. pull up our Atari games and they all use that chip for a long time and they all sounded the same. Yeah. 
So yeah. I always kind of can narrow it down better. And I thought I was going to get you on this, but you you got it. Woo! Nicely done. Yeah, baby. That, you know how I know that? Mm. Because I do this show. Mm. That's the only reason why I knew that that was a radar scope. Well, because, well, yeah. well, well freaking done, I would say to you. But you uh, did make it harder if I hadn't have if I hadn't have pulled that out of my ass. Yeah, right out of your arse. Big old drippy. Yes, I wet love I love arse doing pole. this, and I'm sorry I guessed it. You, no, you no, no, no. Don't be sorry. You did good. I got lucky. Let's see how let's see how I do with yours. <laughs> tell me, tell me what I'm looking at here. What's my basics? You all right. This is this is uh we'll play a little bit of the music and then I'll uh this welcome to guess my game. And yeah. mine is gonna be from the uh the NES uh platform. Yeah. The year was 1986, and I want Scott to, to to tell me if it's one of the following choices. Uh, play a little bit of the audio, and then I'll I'll give you your options here. All right, here we go. NES, 1986. All right, give me my options. All right, this is from uh, the NES. It had a lot of uh, titles that were movie tie-ins. We've actually done a podcast episode on that one as well. I don't know if we covered any of these. I don't remember doing... Did we do some of these? Anyway, all right, here's your choice. Okay, go. Willow. Okay. B. Okay. Beetlejuice. 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 This one, Beetlejuice. C. Gremlins 2, the new batch. Or D. The Goonies. Oh my gosh, they're all movie based titles. Did these all exist and are they in the same year or no? They're all, they all exist. Um, I believe they all existed between 1984 and 1987. That would make I sense because 84 was Gremlins. I think. Right. But Beetlejuice was like 86, 87. I forget. Right. I'm so excited about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice the movie. Oh, no. Gremlins 2 is later, though. All right. Um, I got to hear this again. Hold on. Um... It sounds devious, so I'm going to narrow this down. All right. This is either Beetlejuice or Gremlins. Don't think it's Willow. It's not the right tone. Goonies could be, but I don't remember there even being a Goonies game. I could be wrong on that. I'm going to I'm going to hope that it's This is a total toss-up. I'm, I'm tossing a coin here. You know what? I am going to toss a coin. Ooh, why don't you toss a burger? Heads. Heads. <laughs> just see if you can toss right. that burger. Here we go. Toss the burger. Heads or, heads or tails on the burgers. All right. Toss. I picked heads. I got tails. That means that's going to go to Gremlins 2. Is it correct? You got the ass bun? I All got right. the ass bun. Yeah. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry. What is it? Is I it Beetlejuice? Really, I thought it was... I made it too hard again. I thought I was making it easier because we've talked about it a hundred times, and then you're like, I wasn't even on there. The Goonies from the uh, NES. Oh, uh, there was a Goonies game. I didn't know they made one. Brick. Yeah, Goonies 2 is actually a classic, and it's one of the ones I oh, I came this close to saying we should do Goonies 2 for next week's episode of Play Retro, uh, and that's the reason why I was digging back through uh, the Goonies. Um, apologies. I, I thought it was going to be easier, but now that I've... I see. I, no, I none, none needed. I should have gotten it. Yeah. Chat, chat's asking. Let me just get rid of this distraction. I don't real think quick. the chat got it either. But I they're was asking what my they're uh, asking what this glove is on my hand. This is not because my hand hurts. It's not like a, a medical thing. This is my drawing glove, and I just left it on for the show. I forgot I had it on. Scott's a Scott's a superhero. You didn't know that? No, well, you guys not know. I take yeah, these I things. I actually bought this one this way. But usually, what I'll do is buy some cheap gloves and then cut mm -hmm. fingers and thumb out of it, and then I've got basically this. So it's good yeah. for like you know screens, even paper. I'll use this. Um, is it, what kind? Of, even, even paper? Even pa you ever seen paper? But this one <laughs> is made for this. So you buy them without the fingers and the thumb, and it's like yeah. eight bucks will get you like twenty of these or something. I, I thought it was. I thought it was some kind of uh, new power glove. Is what I thought it was. I thought <laughs> it was like, power power glove. glove. The power is in your hands, the gamers. Power is in your pinky and ring finger. That's right. That's what I always was told. <laughs> All right, well done on that. Welcome to the treasure room. Time for the listener feedback on the show. We got a text and an email today. Text come to us at 801-471-0462. Taz wrote in. He's in the chat as well today, I believe. Oh, hi, Taz. Yep, there he is. Uh, he says it's my anime glove. Thanks, Taz. Uh <laughs> <laughs> He says, for Play Retro, my first experience with Roller Coaster Ty Tycoon was playing it at the CompUSA store on a 4x3 Dell while my parents shopped. 
I was hooked from those 20 or 30 minutes and have been a fan ever since, says Taz. Yeah, man, when you lock in on something around the right age, you know, and it mm-hmm. just, it just, it just everything about whatever it is you're playing, especially in games, and it just sticks to you. Yeah. You'll be a fan for the rest of your life. You'll never not want to play it. You know, I miss I miss going to Comp USA, man. That was always that was always super fun. All those oh, all those PCs, just such a dream. Yeah, to be able to walk into a, a you know, like a Comp USA or a place like that where you could just PCs just running the, the latest games, mm-hmm. the games you wanted at your house that you couldn't afford. Uh, right there on display. No, oh, CompUSA yeah. ruled. I was a huge fan. I had friends that worked there, so they get me some cool stuff sometimes. Bought my first MP3 player there. It was like a Diamond yes. Rio, like the 128 Oh, yeah, the Diamond meg. Rio crap. I yep. God, I hated those. I loved them so much. Yep. Almost bought, or no, I bought an HD TV, or an HD DVD mm-hmm. drive there. And this was before they tried to push that DivX thing, which is oh, a whole yeah, different yeah. animal, and that never worked out. Um. And then what else did I ever get? I think I got a car stereo there once when I was like 20 something. Yeah. And yeah. then it all went away. <laughs> then it all went away. Just like that, your big box store disappeared. All you have left now is Best Buy. And I'm I'm curious what people feel about that. I went into Best Buy not that long ago, one this a, a couple of hours away. It's one of the larger ones in mm-hmm. the area. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had like a bunch of the uh the the arcade one up machines and things oh, on yeah. display for, yeah. for playing around. And I'm like, oh, this is probably inspiring some kids. Uh, sometime in the future um to to come out and play it i remember when they did the they had the when the move thing was a real big thing mm-hmm. Remember when move playstation oh, yeah. move was a big thing oh, oh man yeah. i loved that wasn't that long ago that no was the, last the move really sucked had. though man it it, 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 was, it was better was than the cool wii concept it was better right. than the wii controllers but it was they never did shit with it uh, this is the problem with peripherals like this and the reason i don't even like mid console bumps like the playstation pro 5 that's got or PS5 Pro that'll come out this fall, yeah. seemingly yeah. confirmed. Um, it's great and all because the specs look awesome. They did this with PS4 and Xbox One as well, and they you know it looked like a sizable jump, but nothing really came out of it because they can't alienate their existing player base. So you just yeah. kind of end up in an average place. I guess it's fine for new buyers. That's fine. But they're not going to go crazy with it or else everybody with an existing PS5 is going to go, hang on a second. I got in line on day one and be, be, be supported. Be, be, be. You know what I mean? Be, be. I, I love your out. I always love your outraged impression. I love it. <laughs> that guy. You I'm never. Outraged. You don't want to spend any time with this guy. I made up. He's an ass. No, you don't. Yeah. You'd rather spend it with uh, Taz for twenty to thirty minutes playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. Which, by the way, like that was my experience too, Taz. When Roller Coaster Tycoon came out, there was no. I don't know if it was just sheer marketing willpower or if it was just they were giving out copies to, to wherever that they could run it, put it in a cereal box, put it, uh, get one free when you order some pizza rolls. You know, it's like right. it, 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 it's a pizza roll or a coaster roller coaster tycoon. I'd love to hear from you guys if you if you would, because I know that was like the heyday of of CD distribution. Oh, yeah. It was around you know, like 99. It's like a super cheap. You could just, you did, that was the best way to distribute it. Get it in the hands of any kid you could. Yep. I'd love to hear some stories. About yeah. That. All your friends. That's yeah. how they'd get it and play it and have it. I'll, yeah. admi- I'll admit to a little of that tomfoolery back then. I love it. Anyway, thanks for that, Taz. We also got an email from Santos in Brooklyn, New York, who says, Hey guys, just found your podcast and quickly became a fan. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah. Woo. Uh, I was listening to your Metroid Thanks, episode on one, let's see, Metroid episode. Oh, wow. And one of you mentioned the Captain N cartoon show. Pretty sure it was Brian. That's a long, that's a, that's an early episode too. Thank you for going back and listening to the archive Santos. Oh, yeah, yes, it's like nice. first 10, I think, or something. Yeah, yeah. Captain N cartoon. Yes. Yeah. He says he made me wonder, or this made me wonder if either of you guys remembered the game show called Video Power and the cartoon related to it called The Power Team. The Power Team show had characters such as Max Force, uh, Narc. <laughs> <laughs> Cur- uh, Kuros from Wizards and Warriors, uh, Quick or Quirk, a character that looked like a tomato with shades of a mohawk, or w- sorry, yes. with shades and a mohawk. Tyrone, which was our rivals, and Bigfoot from the monster truck who talks. Or it was a it wasn't a game called that, but it was a character, a monster truck yeah. that talked. Uh, keep up the good work. Thanks for all the memories. I never never saw any of this shit. I think I remember Video Power, but I don't remember this cartoon that was tied into it. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. I remember this uh, early '90s stuff. And, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. The monster truck. I kind of uh, forgot about Bigfoot, the monster truck that talked in that, but was, yeah. Oh, man. Was he Quark, called Bigfoot in that? Tomato. 
was he called Bigfoot? I can't remember. I'm I'm just getting flashes of it. Because that um, was a that's a name brand ass um, <laughs> yeah, monster that, truck. Oh, Bigfoot. Oh man, during the early '90s, Bigfoot was was licensing the shit out of itself. It's like, yeah, I'm Bigfoot, blue, big blue monster truck. What do you want? We want cartoons. Yeah, the kids love us. It's like, no problem. I'll do whatever you want. I'm cheap There's that so way. So many Bigfoots. Yeah, but Max Force. Oh God, yes, we need to go back. Sam, thank you for bringing up that memories. I need to uh, uh, go back and do that. I was looking at. Um, I got. A, I picked up a new Sony. Uh, VCR uh, DVD this past week. Did I talk about it last week? Did I, I get it so. that day last uh-huh. week? I don't think I did, but I got a I got a new one and it's high quality, man. It's got auto tracking and everything. I paid like 20 bucks for it because it said the VCR didn't work. And I was like, okay, well, let me make sure it's not a belt or something simple. So I popped a little, just a few screws on it, popped it off. Somebody had stuck in a kid's refrigerator magnet. It was oh, like no. stuck to the top of it. And I guess it was impeding the ability to put the, the tape in it. Yeah. And so I was like, yoink, yoink. And it worked perfect, man. It is the best looking VCR I have. It's got HDMI output. Um, it upscales. I watched Monsters Inc. this past week. Uh, it looked uh, phenomenal for a VHS. Well, for Love a VHS, it. I yes. watch some of those cartoons. Okay. Yeah, yeah. As good as a VHS. Hey, man, there was some... There was a while when you only could, the only way you could get, uh, there was like high definition uh, VHSs, believe it or not. There was, uh, they did, they did okay. So, yeah, they did all right. Okay. This power, yeah. this power tunes or this power, what is it? Power team cartoon. Let's see. Power team cartoon. We need team to watch full this. series compilation. Oh my gosh. We could watch this. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah. Can I hear some of this? Let me hear some of this. Uh, oh. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> They're all in here, dude. Yeah, baby. I'm loving this. Yeah, I kind of forgot about this. This is good. All right. We will put it on the list of things we'd like to do. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your email. Emails again, playretroshow at gmail.com. And once again, the text slash voicemail line is 801 471 or 801 471 Zero gob. Gob. <laughs> I don't have another good way thing to core core fans will know about the 10 hams mis- problem. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> 10 hams doesn't work. Anyway, whatever. Doesn't doesn't matter. Hey Brian, let's do a quick uh, one of these here deals. Ludicrous kill. It's the Unreal report. Let's uh, talk about that. What's going on in our Unreal server life? All right, so hey, this may be the final Unreal Report for a little while. That's because me and Scott have gotten kind of busy. This happens this time of year. Uh, Scott's getting ready to head out to Vegas and just life in general. We uh, we've we've uh, we might not be doing uh, the Unreal Report going forward for a little while. Doesn't mean we won't play things. Unreal. It's just that we no. Uh, it's just when the report features me dropping a rung every damn day. It's because I haven't had time yeah. to play. It's just like, well, what was the point of telling everybody where I am on this list? It's not going to work it out. Kind of, it's kind of been the same top five people for a while on both servers. So, you know, it's fine. It's fine. There's actually some more things we would like to report on, you know, because there's a lot of things going on in the community. So don't don't think we'll get rid of uh, the the community report, but the Unreal report uh, may be kind of uh, piled into that later Maybe on. we'll but call yeah, it the go- retro. We'll call it the retro report the retro report there and it will go. be the retro all report. everything it's like hey we found out from some of the community with what they did some crazy shit in minecraft this week what'd they do or hey yes hey, did you hear what those guys did with the mod for uh, the thing which made uh, i don't know luigi naked for the whole game sweet let's talk about you know whatever whatever it is you guys are doing we'll we'll, yeah. we'll try to include that in this thing okay Yes, it's going to be good. But RetroGIB.com if you want more information about the Unreal games in the servers that we're playing. So we were playing on Mondays and Friday nights. Uh, we can't always guarantee that right now, but we might get back to that. You know how it is. You, you ebb and flow. You're in and out. You kind of play those things. But the servers are still going to be maintained. I'm still going to keep those up. So please play them and let me know if you're getting on there with a group of people. Maybe I can pop in and play. Maybe it's got, got pop in and play too. We'll see. Yeah. But yeah, it's not going anywhere. Servers aren't going anywhere. They're staying where they are. I will definitely be yes. playing more. I just got to, yeah. you know, it's just it, time. It, 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 it's, I know. You got the Monday show uh, and, and that kind of interferes with that. And then Friday nights get kind of busy and we yeah. just got to move some stuff around. It's good. Yeah. It's, we're gamers. This yeah. is how it works. I'd play tonight if I didn't have to go to this stupid wedding party. I don't want to go. Oh, stupid wedding party. I mean, I'll tell you what I'd be doing. I'd be playing. I'll be playing my Delta emulator on my iPhone. Look, I I'll love my niece as much as anybody could, but 
I'd rather play video games than go to this party. No one wants to go to your wedding. <laughs> I right? really don't want to we, go. We're doing it as a sacrifice, and it's a it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It but is. It is. <laughs> it's a, it's about you, and I'm there because I love you. Yeah. Don't expect anything. Keep else. all this in mind, everyone. <laughs> elope. I said, you know, Ambassador Domo's got it right. Elope. Absa freaking lutely elope. I would love that if they did that. They're not gonna. Oh my though. god. My yes, sister, my I, sister does this stuff big. There is no eloping. It's not happening. I think I don't know. I don't know at what point in time, especially in the U.S., that things have changed in our minds. But I know that it used to be like big wedding, big funerals, and now everybody's like cremate me, use the extra money to party. Uh, you know, and it's like elope, small wedding. Uh, let's get on with it. Let's stop spending. Let's let's stop getting twenty thousand dollars in debt before we're even married. Yeah. You know, and twenty thousand dollars in debt when you're dead to leave to your kids. Yeah. Let's stop that. I've let's said this. That. I've said this since I got married. If Kim and I could do it over again, we would have eloped because there was really no advantage. We just spent a ton right. of money and really didn't get anything back. I got a lot of pairs yeah. of pants. You have, I got all the jeans. They, they always tell you this: the memories. Uh, you know, he tells you that. The camera people, yeah. big camera, want you to get married. That's for right. The memories. <laughs> yep. And when I die, just right. Put me in old people's brownies and leave it alone. Be done. Uh, uh, it's sp- spread me on my uh, Commodore sixty four breadboard and uh, blow me off. That's, yeah, that's, that's what it. I say. That's yeah. exactly right, Brian. You and I are in the same boat. Let's do it. That's yeah. how we're gonna die slowly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I didn't say I wanted to die. I was just talking about <laughs> my remains. Hey, I got some good news, everybody. Good news for everybody listening to the show. Next week, we're going to talk about Dig Dug and its uh, terrible yeah. sequel. Dig Dug's important, though. Dig Dug's a big deal. Dig Dug 2, massive uh, pr- uh, mistake. It's not great. And I don't yeah. blame them because they were trying new things. Joust did the same thing. Joust, all-time favorite of mine. First episode we ever did was about Joust. I revere Joust until my dying breath, like we just talked about. But I'll tell you what, Joust 2, not as good of a game. It just isn't. Mm. And that's what happened with Dig Dug. But Dig Dug, or the original Dig Dug, powerfully important, influential as hell, fun as hell back in the day. It's time for Dig Dug to get his his time. It it really is. And we forget that there was, you know, just like a lot of iterations of things that kind of came in and out of favor, there was a glut for a short period of time, like Mm -hmm. between... You know, the early 80s, mid 80s, where you had a bunch of digger games. And I I, I actually put a post on uh, Twitter today or X, whatever you want to call it, asking for people's favorites, uh, their, their favorite digger type game. I asked about uh, Dig Dug, The Pit, Balder Dash. Uh, what, was, what was the other one that I asked about here? Let me, if I've already forgotten. There was one more. Wait, what was it? Scott, quick, tell me. What was the other uh, one in my, in my Well, bowl? for me, SteamWorld Dig, the two SteamWorld Dig games don't exist. Mr. Without Do. Dig. That was the oh, other Mr. one. How did I forget Mr. Do? Yeah, uh, Mr. Do uh, would by, like by, you by, to remember Mr. Do if you can remember him. Yeah. I had some I had some really funny answers too, but we'll we'll talk about that next week. But yeah. Dig Dug definitely won out. Uh Balder Dash may get a mention. And Mr. Do, he do what he do. Mr. Do do what he do. Mm. It's gonna do it for us. Big thanks to everybody who supports us on Patreon, patreon.com slash play retro. We got two new folks this week, S E B or Seb and Greg Beauregard. Both joined us. They get no commercials ever. They get pre-show content every week, including today. We talked a lot about RG58 XXs, another cool Ambernick business in our pre-show. Uh, so check that out. You also get monthly benefits you can only have if you sign up today at patreon.com slash play retro. For those asking us to uh, record more of us watching x-men 97 or even the old 90s x-men when we're done uh we we, we were talking we'll figure it out i'd love to do more of that yeah we need to we need to do it we just got to find the time unfortunately this is the tightest time that me and scott probably have is the next couple of weeks right yeah but it's rough things will loosen up in in june for me may may is still pretty crazy but we're gonna figure it out we want to we like to we will all right all right that's gonna do it for us brian any final words before i throw this thing into overdrive (laughs) well i was gonna go but i know discord cuts me off stupid discord we'll see you guys next week go play something retro you weirdos click 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 Ah! where's the bathroom get more at frogpants.com my kids lost their lunch on that roller coaster you built close (laughs) that roller coaster you